Hi everyone, we're going to find the domain, locate intercepts, and graph the function, and also find the range after we graph it. And the first thing we're going to do is test for continuity, and uh, we'll get started. So here we go. Here's your piecewise function, and the definition of continuity is right here, basically just meeting these three conditions. So basically for this first one uh, we have to satisfy condition one. Now it says f of c must exist. So uh, your c is where uh, the changes are occurring. So we have two different linear functions. So that's good to know they're linear when we're graphing this. So uh, but it changes at negative two. So your c equals negative two. So all this states is that we must have one. So we put f of negative 2. Well, where does uh, x equal negative 2? It's right here. So we plug it into this uh, lower portion. So negative 2 times negative 2 plus 5. That equals 9. So f of uh, negative 2 is 9. Now we have to... Uh, it, can, it does exist, so condition 1 passes. So now we have to test for, this is condition 1. So now we have to do condition 2. And this states that the limit as x approaches our c, which is negative 2 from the left, must equal the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So looking at this, so I have negative 2 here. So that means all numbers as they approach negative 2, that means all these numbers that are less than negative 2. So what would that limit be? And also from the right would be all these numbers approaching to the right. That means greater than negative 2. So these numbers would be less than negative 2 and these numbers here would be greater than negative 2. Alright, so uh, from the left, that means all numbers less than negative 2, which is this upper portion. So you plug in negative 2 into this function. So you have negative 2 plus 3, that equals 1. Alright, now plug in all numbers greater than negative 2. Well, that one is, we're back to this one. So you plug in negative 2 into the lower portion, and that gives you 9. Um, 1 does not equal 9, so these limits do not equal. That means condition, this does not exist. So condition 2 fails. That means this function is not continuous, it's discontinuous. All right. Now we can go ahead and graph this, and here we go. Let's graph the upper portion. Now our C here was negative 2, so let's go to negative 2. Now you plug in negative 2 to this equation here. Negative 2 plus 3 is uh, 1, but it can't equal 1. We can get very close to 1. Because, um, we can get very close to it, but not. So let's plug in negative 3. So what we're doing is all numbers smaller than negative 2. If you plug in negative um, 3, we are at 0. All right, and you can do more, but since you know it's linear, you know the slope is 1, you can just kind of graph on these. It just goes on and on and on and on, and that's that. All right, now let's look at the second portion of the graph. And we plug in negative 2 again. So if you plug in negative 2, we go to 9. So basically, I need to erase this right here. So um, you go to 9, which is way up here. And again, I'll just write this as uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. This one was x is less than uh, negative 2. All right, sorry about that. Now, let's plug in our 0 here at 0, because we have to get our y-intercept. You plug in the y-intercept, um, x 
is 0, because 0 is bigger than negative 2, you're going to get negative 3. So we're down here at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So now you can uh, connect these two. It goes on and on and on. So there's that portion. That's supposed to be a straight line. So pretend it's a straight line. All right. So you can see where it's discontinuous. It's discontinuous because we have a jump discontinuity. So you see where if you draw the line here, I'll do it in green. If you draw here, you have to pick your pencil up and go way up here and then draw this supposedly straight line here. All right. So that's why our uh, condition 2 failed. So this is called a jump discontinuity. Now let's um, uh, check our domain. Your domain is all real numbers. You can just look at this part, and it covers everything. It covers negative 2, all numbers smaller than negative 2, and all numbers bigger than negative 2. So your domain is all real numbers. All right, uh, or you can write it like this. Um, your intercepts, well, we have one here, and we have one here. So this is an x-intercept, and that's going to occur at negative 3, comma, 0. This is a y-intercept, which is 0, comma, negative 3. We have another one right here. And that occurs on this lower portion of the graph. So let's set that to 0 and see what that is. That's when your y is 0. So we have negative 2x equals 3. So x equals negative 3 halves. So of course I didn't graph that like that. So basically that's going to be uh, x is negative 3 halves when uh, y is 0. So there's your intercepts. So if I kind of change this graph a little, because it should be negative one and a half, occurs right about there, and this is going to be really hard to graph. So basically, it goes through there, then it goes anyway. I'm just not graphing this very well. Maybe my nine's off. Um, so I'll try to make it straight anyway. Sorry about the graph. It's just, uh, it's just really hard for me to graph on here. So there it is. Um, there's your intercepts. And let's look at the range. The range is accounted for everywhere. Because remember, the range you're looking for the... Um, you're starting down here and going up. And, oh, it only uh, goes to what? It stops here at 9. So the range is y is less than or equal to 9, because it stops right here. Uh, or you could say the range is negative infinity to 9. And that would be it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.